Hello, fellow pet lovers. How in the world are you? Today we're going to talk about raising puppies. Well, here we are with our two little puppies, Miss Yellow and Miss Pink. This is a continuation of the saga that began just a few hours ago when these kids were born. I find that watching puppies meet mother for the first time is just totally fascinating, very predictable, but nonetheless incredible every time you watch because their instincts just, um, shall we say, bloom right before your very eyes. They begin rooting around, looking for something, looking for mother, looking for what they might be looking for. They discover mother and voila, it's just incredible. They crawl around, push on mama's bosom, they attempt to climb up over her back. The casual observer might be hard pressed to say whether their efforts are deliberate or whether they're totally random. But one thing's for sure, they're focused on exploring their mother from head to toe and they're not looking in random directions, going off to random points of the compass, so to speak. We know that mother's scent draws them, and we also now know that mother's mammary glands emit pheromones, a special kind of, of hormone that is working outside the body sensory glands in the puppy's nose, which are already present and developed, receive these pheromones, and the puppies are drawn to them. The receptor in the puppy's nose is called the organ of Jacobi, and it is born fully functional. Remember that puppies and kittens are born with their eyes closed. Their ear canals have not opened, and their internal auditory structures are not fully developed. Thus, for the first 10 to 14 days, they can't see anything. Their eyes won't open until then. And their ability to respond to visual signals is zero and the auditory response is equally muted for several weeks. Yet, we can see an invisible but well-documented link has become established between mother and puppy. Later, as they develop, these puppies will get bigger and bigger and bigger. We'll see them sound asleep in the nest. Mother can enter no noiselessly, silently, lay down, not disturb them tactily or auditorily, and yet, they'll awake and move to her and begin nursing. This all is ex exciting for me to watch and observe, and it's wonderful to be able to share little glimpses of this with all of you. I find this a um, a magnificent example of the design God has built into these little ones from the get-go. Look at this little pink girl. She's hours old. She's latched on the mother's nipple. You can see her little paw implanted on, on mother's breast. From time to time, you'll see little kneading, pushing motions. We know that this actually stimulates mother's um, milk letdown. The nursing action obviously stimulates her milk letdown, but nursing begets more milk and more milk begets more nursing. It's a, I hate to use the expression vicious cycle because it's a not so vicious cycle because it's the cycle that innately develops, causes the mammary glands to develop more and more and more to supply more and more milk for these puppies as they get bigger and bigger and bigger. I hope that makes sense. When, she, when these puppies are born, mother's mammary glands have 
developed a little enough to dump out colostrum for a couple of days and begin producing milk. Um, but if if the puppies were the age of three weeks where they would be arguably they're born in a pound and a quarter, maybe three and a quarter or four pounds, but three and a half to four weeks, this mammary gland would never support them. Does that make sense? Well, I hope so. At any rate, that's all for today. We leave mother and puppies uh, nursing. Stay tuned uh, for our next episode. Have a great puppy day. So, until next time, it's me, Dr. B, signing off. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends. And subscribe so you won't miss the next installment and we can stay in touch. Have a great puppy day.